Hello, and welcome to my channel. In today's video, I will be talking about network terminology. So, let's get started. Network terminology is important to understand to help us communicate with other network professionals. So we're going to be looking at a series of network terminologies that will help us speak the language of networking. We're going to start with understanding the TCP IP model. Now, the TCP IP model was based off the OSI model. The only difference is in the TCP IP model, I see the protocols that are involved in the TCP IP suite. So we're going to look at application presentation and session layers combined into the application layer in the TCP IP model. This is where I would see HTTP, FTP, SMTP, and even POP. Now, the next layer is the transport layer. And here, the protocols that are found are TCP, which is associated with connection-oriented protocol, and UDP, which is associated with connection -less. The next protocol, instead of calling it the network layer, we call it the internet layer. Here, we only have one protocol, which is known as the internet protocol or IP. Finally, we combine the data link and physical layers together and create the network access layer. Here, the protocol that you might be familiar with is the ethernet protocol. So these are some basic terminology that we use when it comes to understanding the TCP IP model. Now, the next thing we're going to look at is network hardware and where does that fit into the OSI model. Now, typically, network hardware are devices that connect end devices together. These network hardware are determined by how far each device is connected to each other. So when we look at network layer devices, I would typically see routers or firewalls. The next hardware is found at the data link layer, and those are switches. And finally, at the physical layer, this is where I see network interface cards and access points. These are the devices that connect end devices together. Now, the end devices and network devices need some way of connecting to each other, and that's where our physical media comes in. In essence, we have copper as a physical media, and in copper, typically, we would see coaxial cables or twisted pair cables. When we come to fiber optic, we're typically going to see either single mode or multi-mode. When it comes to wireless networks, this is where I see the 2.4 gigahertz radio wave band and or the 5 gigahertz radio band. Within each of those physical medias, there is distance limitations. And based on how far my end devices or my network devices are, I would select either copper, fiber optic, or wireless. Once we understand the network devices, end devices, and how we connect them together, then we can categorize these networks based on geographical location. Now, the first common one is the local area network or LAN. In a local area network, devices are in a small area. They are typically connected with switches or access points. 
when I want to connect one local area network to another local area network that's far away from me, this is where I have a wide area network. A wide area network connects multiple LANs over a large area. Devices that will help me take care of this requirement are routers. And then finally, we have an interesting type of network, which is called a personal area network. And these devices are within your own personal area, no longer than 33 feet away. And typically, the technology that I use to do this is Bluetooth. Now, how I connect the local area network, wide area network, or even personal area network together with these devices is based on the concept of network topology. The common topologies that are out there include the star topology. And I will know I'm in a star topology when devices are connected to a central device, such as a switch. The next type of topology is known as a bus topology. Here, the devices are connected via one cable only. And typically, at the end of the cables are terminators so that the signal doesn't bounce back and forth. When I want to have redundancy in my network in case one connection or one cable fails, then I have a mesh topology. And in a mesh topology, devices are connected to multiple devices using multiple NIC cards and multiple cables. The last topology is known as a star bus topology, where we have devices connected to a central device, then to a backbone network. So in today's video, we looked at the terminology that we typically see in computer networking. I hope you liked my video. If you do, please click like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for listening.